The British Broadcasting Corporation BBC, is a British public service broadcaster. Its headquarters are at Broadcasting House in Westminster, London, and it is the world's oldest national broadcasting organisation and the largest broadcaster in the world by number of employees. It employs over 20,950 staff in total, 16,672 of whom are in public sector broadcasting. The total number of staff is 35,402 when part time, flexible, and fixed contract staff are included. The BBC is established under a royal charter and operates under its agreement with the Secretary of State for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. Its work is funded principally by an annual television license fee which is charged to all British households, companies, and organisations using any type of equipment to receive or record live television broadcasts and iPlayer catch-up. The fee is set by the British government, agreed by Parliament, and used to fund the BBC's radio, TV, and online services covering the nations and regions of the UK. Since 1 April 2014, it has also funded the BBC World Service, launched in 1932 as the BBC Empire Service, which broadcasts in 28 languages and provides comprehensive TV, radio, and online services in Arabic and Persian. Around a quarter of BBC's revenue comes from its commercial subsidiary BBC Studios, formerly BBC Worldwide, which sells BBC programmes and services internationally and also distributes the BBC's international 24-hour English-language news services BBC World News, and from BBC.com, provided by BBC Global News Limited. In 2009, the company was awarded the Queen's Award for Enterprise in recognition of its international achievements, from its inception, through the Second World War, where its broadcasts helped to unite the nation, to the 21st century, the BBC has played a prominent role in British life and culture. It is also known colloquially as, the Beeb, Auntie, or a combination of both, as, Auntie Beeb, or, Auntie B. Topic History Topic The Birth of British Broadcasting, nineteen twenty to nineteen twenty two Britain's first live public broadcast was made from the factory of Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company in Chelmsford in June nineteen twenty. It was sponsored by the Daily Mail's Lord Northcliffe and featured the famous Australian soprano Dame Nellie Melba. The Melba broadcast caught the people's imagination and marked a turning point in the British public's attitude to radio. However, this public enthusiasm was not shared in official circles where such broadcasts were held to interfere with important military and civil communications. By late 1920, pressure from these quarters and uneasiness among the staff of the licensing authority, the General Post Office GPO, was sufficient to lead to a ban on further Chelmsford broadcasts, but by 1922, the GPO had received nearly 100 broadcast license requests and moved to rescind its ban in the wake of a petition by 63 wireless societies with over 3,000 members. Anxious to avoid the same chaotic expansion experienced in the United States, the GPO proposed that it would issue a single broadcasting license to a company jointly owned by a consortium of leading wireless receiver manufacturers, to be known as the British Broadcasting Company Limited. John Reith, a Scottish Calvinist, was appointed its general manager in December 1922 a few weeks after the company made its first official broadcast. L. Stanton Jeffries was its first director of music. The company was to be financed by a royalty on the sale of BBC wireless receiving sets from approved domestic manufacturers. To this day, the BBC aims to follow the Reithian directive to inform, educate and entertain. Topic. From private company towards public service corporation, 1923 to 1926 The financial arrangements soon proved inadequate. 
set sales were disappointing as amateurs made their own receivers and listeners bought rival unlicensed sets. By mid-1923, discussions between the GPO and the BBC had become deadlocked and the Postmaster General commissioned a review of broadcasting by the Sykes Committee. The committee recommended a short-term reorganization of license fees with improved enforcement in order to address the BBC's immediate financial distress, and an increased share of the license revenue split between it and the GPO. This was to be followed by a simple 10 shillings license fee with no royalty once the wireless manufacturer's protection expired. The BBC's broadcasting monopoly was made explicit for the duration of its current broadcast license, as was the prohibition on advertising. The BBC was also banned from presenting news bulletins before 1900 and was required to source all news from external wire services. Mid-1925 found the future of broadcasting under further consideration, this time by the Crawford Committee. By now, the BBC, under Reith's leadership, had forged a consensus favouring a continuation of the unified monopoly broadcasting service, but more money was still required to finance rapid expansion. Wireless manufacturers were anxious to exit the loss-making consortium with Reith keen that the BBC be seen as a public service rather than a commercial enterprise. The recommendations of the Crawford Committee were published in March the following year and were still under consideration by the GPO when the 1926 general strike broke out in May. The strike temporarily interrupted newspaper production, and with restrictions on news bulletins waived, the BBC suddenly became the primary source of news for the duration of the crisis. The crisis placed the BBC in a delicate position. On one hand Reith was acutely aware that the government might exercise its right to commandeer the BBC at any time as a mouthpiece of the government if the BBC were to step out of line, but on the other he was anxious to maintain public trust by appearing to be acting independently. The government was divided on how to handle the BBC but ended up trusting Reith, whose opposition to the strike mirrored the PM's own. Thus the BBC was granted sufficient leeway to pursue the government's objectives largely in a manner of its own choosing. The resulting coverage of both striker and government viewpoints impressed millions of listeners who were unaware that the PM had broadcast to the nation from Reith's home, using one of Reith's sound bites inserted at the last moment, or that the BBC had banned broadcasts from the Labour Party and delayed a peace appeal by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Supporters of the strike nicknamed the BBC the BFC for British Falsehood Company. Reith personally announced the end of the strike which he marked by reciting from Blake's Jerusalem, signifying that England had been saved. While the BBC tends to characterise its coverage of the general strike by emphasising the positive impression created by its balanced coverage of the views of government and strikers, Jean Seaton, professor of media history and the official BBC historian, has characterised the episode as the invention of modern propaganda in its British form. Reith argued that trust gained by authentic and partial news could then be used. Impartial news was not necessarily an end in itself. The BBC did well out of the crisis, which cemented a national audience for its broadcasting, and it was followed by the government's acceptance of the recommendation made by the Crawford Committee 1925-26 that the British Broadcasting Company be replaced by a non-commercial, crown-chartered organisation, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Topic. 1927 to 1939 The British Broadcasting Corporation came into existence on 1 January 1927, and Reith, newly knighted, was appointed its first Director General. To represent its purpose and stated values, the new corporation adopted the coat of arms, including the motto, Nation shall speak peace unto nation. British radio audiences had little choice apart from the upscale programming of the BBC. Reith, an intensely moralistic executive, was in full charge. His goal was to broadcast, "...all that is best in every department of human knowledge, endeavour and achievement." The preservation of a high moral tone is obviously of paramount importance. 
Reith succeeded in building a high wall against an American-style free-for-all in radio in which the goal was to attract the largest audiences and thereby secure the greatest advertising revenue. There was no paid advertising on the BBC, all the revenue came from a tax on receiving sets. Highbrow audiences, however, greatly enjoyed it. At a time when American, Australian and Canadian stations were drawing huge audiences cheering for their local teams with the broadcast of baseball, rugby and hockey, the BBC emphasized service for a national, rather than a regional audience. Boat races were well covered along with tennis and horse racing, but the BBC was reluctant to spend its severely limited airtime on long football or cricket games, regardless of their popularity. John Reith and the BBC, with support from the Crown, determined the universal needs of the people of Britain and broadcast content according to these perceived standards. Reith effectively censored anything that he felt would be harmful, directly or indirectly. While recounting his time with the BBC in 1935, Raymond Postgate claims that BBC broadcasters were made to submit a draft of their potential broadcast for approval. It was expected that they tailored their content to accommodate the modest, church-going elderly or a member of the clergy. Until 1928, entertainers broadcasting on the BBC, both singers and talkers, were expected to avoid biblical quotations, clerical impersonations and references, references to drink or prohibition in America, vulgar and doubtful matter and political allusions. The BBC excluded popular foreign music and musicians from its broadcasts, while promoting British alternatives. On 5 March 1928, Stanley Baldwin, the Prime Minister, maintained the censorship of editorial opinions on public policy, but allowed the BBC to address matters of religious, political or industrial controversy. The resulting political talk series, designed to inform England on political issues, were criticised by members of Parliament, including Winston Churchill, David Lloyd George and Sir Austin Chamberlain. Those who opposed these chats claimed that they silence the opinions of those in Parliament who are not nominated by party leaders or party whips, thus stifling independent, non-official views. In October 1932, the policemen of the Metropolitan Police Federation marched in protest of a proposed pay cut. Fearing dissent within the police force and public support for the movement, the BBC censored its coverage of the events, only broadcasting official statements from the government. Throughout the 1930s, political broadcasts had been closely monitored by the BBC. In 1935, the BBC censored the broadcasts of Oswald Mosley and Harry Pollitt. Mosley was a leader of the British Union of Fascists, and Pollitt a leader of the Communist Party of Great Britain. They had been contracted to provide a series of five broadcasts on their party's politics. The BBC, in conjunction with the Foreign Office of Britain, first suspended this series and ultimately cancelled it without the notice of the public. Less radical politicians faced similar censorship. In 1938, Winston Churchill proposed a series of talks regarding British domestic and foreign politics and affairs but was similarly censored. The censorship of political discourse by the BBC was a precursor to the total shutdown of political debate that manifested over the BBC's wartime airwaves. The Foreign Office maintained that the public should not be aware of their role in the censorship. From 1935 to 1939, the BBC also attempted to unite the British Empire's radio waves, sending staff to Egypt, Palestine, Newfoundland, Jamaica, India, Canada and South Africa. Reith personally visited South Africa, lobbying for state-run radio programmes which was accepted by South African Parliament in 1936. A similar programme was adopted in Canada. Through collaboration with these state-run broadcasting centres, Reith left a legacy of cultural influence across the Empire of Great Britain with his departure from the corporation in 1938. <laughs> BBC versus other media The success of broadcasting provoked animosities between the BBC and well-established media such as theatres, concert halls and the recording industry. 
By 1929, the BBC complained that the agents of many comedians refused to sign contracts for broadcasting, because they feared it harmed the artist, "...by making his material stale," and that it "...reduces the value of the artist as a visible music hall performer." On the other hand, the BBC was "...keenly interested." in a cooperation with the recording companies who, in recent years, have not been slow to make records of singers, orchestras, dance bands, etc. who have already proved their power to achieve popularity by wireless. Radio plays were so popular that the BBC had received 6,000 manuscripts by 1929, most of them written for stage and of little value for broadcasting. Day in and day out, manuscripts come in, and nearly all go out again through the post, with a note saying, we regret, etc. In the 1930s music broadcasts also enjoyed great popularity, for example the friendly and wide-ranging organ broadcasts at St George's Hall, Langham Place, by Reginald Fort, who held the official role of BBC staff theatre organist from 1936 to 1938. Fort continued to work for the BBC as a freelance into the 1940s and enjoyed a nationwide following. Experimental television broadcasts were started in 1930, using an electromechanical 30-line system developed by John Logie Baird. Limited regular broadcasts using this system began in 1934, and an expanded service now named the BBC Television Service started from Alexandra Palace in 1936, alternating between an improved Baird mechanical 240-line system and the all-electronic 405-line Marconi EMI system. The superiority of the electronic system saw the mechanical system dropped early the following year. Topic 1939 to 2001. Television broadcasting was suspended from the 1st of September 1939 to the 7th of June 1946 during the Second World War, and it was left to BBC radio broadcasters such as Reginald Fort to keep the nation's spirits up. The BBC moved much of its radio operations out of London, initially to Bristol, and then to Bedford. Concerts were broadcast from the Corn Exchange, the Trinity Chapel in St Paul's Church, Bedford was the studio for the daily service from 1941 to 1945, and, in the darkest days of the war in 1941, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York came to St Paul's to broadcast to the UK and all parts of the world on the National Day of Prayer. BBC employees during the war included George Orwell who spent two years with the broadcaster, during his role as Prime Minister during the Second World War, Winston Churchill would deliver 33 major wartime speeches by radio, all of which were carried by the BBC within the UK. On 18 June 1940, French General Charles de Gaulle, in exile in London as the leader of the Free French, made a speech, broadcast by the BBC, urging the French people not to capitulate to the Nazis. In 1938, John Reith and the British government, specifically the Ministry of Information which had been set up for World War II, designed a censorship apparatus for the inevitability of war. Due to the BBC's advancements in shortwave radio technology, the corporation could broadcast across the world during World War II. Within Europe, the BBC European Service would gather intelligence and information regarding the current events of the war in English. Regional BBC workers, based on their regional geopolitical climate, would then further censor the material their broadcasts would cover. Nothing was to be added outside of the preordained news items. For example, the BBC Polish service was heavily censored due to fears of jeopardizing relations with the Soviet Union. Controversial topics, i.e. the contested Polish and Soviet border, the deportation of Polish citizens, the arrests of Polish Home Army members and the Katyn massacre, were not included in Polish broadcasts. American radio broadcasts were broadcast across Europe on BBC channels. This material also passed through the BBC's censorship office, which surveilled and edited American coverage of British affairs. By 1940, across all BBC broadcasts, music by composers from enemy nations was censored. 
In total, 99 German, 38 Austrian and 38 Italian composers were censored. The BBC argued that like the Italian or German languages, listeners would be irritated by the inclusion of enemy composers. Any potential broadcaster said to have pacifist, communist or fascist ideologies were not allowed on the BBC's airwaves. There was a widely reported urban myth that, upon resumption of the BBC television service after the war, announcer Leslie Mitchell started by saying, As I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted. In fact, the first person to appear when transmission resumed was Jasmine Bly and the words said were, Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Do you remember me, Jasmine Bly? Question mark quote. The European Broadcasting Union was formed on 12 February 1950, in Torquay with the BBC among the 23 founding broadcasting organisations. Competition to the BBC was introduced in 1955, with the commercial and independently operated television network of ITV. However, the BBC monopoly on radio services would persist until 8 October 1973 when under the control of the newly renamed Independent Broadcasting Authority EBA, the UK's first independent local radio station, LBC came on air in the London area. As a result of the Pilkington Committee report of 1962, in which the BBC was praised for the quality and range of its output, and ITV was very heavily criticised for not providing enough quality programming, the decision was taken to award the BBC a second television channel, BBC Two, in 1964, renaming the existing service BBC One. BBC Two used the higher resolution 625 line standard which had been standardized across Europe. BBC Two was broadcast in color from 1 July 1967, and was joined by BBC One and ITV on 15 November 1969. The 405 line VHF transmissions of BBC One and ITV were continued for compatibility with older television receivers until 1985. Starting in 1964, a series of pirate radio stations, starting with Radio Caroline, came on the air and forced the British government finally to regulate radio services to permit nationally based advertising financed services. In response, the BBC reorganised and renamed their radio channels. On 30 September 1967, the light programme was split into Radio 1 offering continuous, popular, music and Radio 2 more, easy listening. The third programme became Radio 3 offering classical music and cultural programming. The home service became Radio 4 offering news, and non-musical content such as quiz shows, readings, dramas and plays. As well as the four national channels, a series of local BBC radio stations were established in 1967, including Radio London. In 1969, the BBC Enterprises Department was formed to exploit BBC brands and programmes for commercial spin-off products. In 1979, it became a wholly owned limited company, BBC Enterprises Limited. In 1974, the BBC's teletext service, CFAX, was introduced, created initially to provide subtitling, but developed into a news and information service. In 1978, BBC staff went on strike just before the Christmas of that year, thus blocking out the transmission of both channels and amalgamating all four radio stations into one. Since the deregulation of the UK television and radio market in the 1980s, the BBC has faced increased competition from the commercial sector, and from the advertiser-funded public service broadcaster Channel 4, especially on satellite television, cable television, and digital television services. In the late 1980s, the BBC began a process of divestment by spinning off and selling parts of its organisation. In 1988, it sold off the Holton Press Library, a photographic archive which had been acquired from the Picture Post magazine by the BBC in 1957. The archive was sold to Brian Deutsch and is now owned by Getty Images. 
During the 1990s, this process continued with the separation of certain operational arms of the corporation into autonomous but wholly owned subsidiaries of the BBC, with the aim of generating additional revenue for programme making. BBC Enterprises was reorganised and relaunched in 1995, as BBC Worldwide Limited. In 1998, BBC Studios, outside broadcasts, post-production, design, costumes and wigs were spun off into BBC Resources Limited. The BBC Research Department has played a major part in the development of broadcasting and recording techniques. The BBC was also responsible for the development of the NICAM Stereo Standard. In recent decades, a number of additional channels and radio stations have been launched. Radio 5 was launched in 1990, as a sports and educational station, but was replaced in 1994, with Radio 5 Live to become a live radio station, following the success of the Radio 4 service to cover the 1991 Gulf War. The new station would be a news and sports station. In 1997, BBC News 24, a rolling news channel, launched on digital television services and the following year, BBC Choice launched as the third general entertainment channel from the BBC. The BBC also purchased the Parliamentary Channel, which was renamed BBC Parliament. In 1999, BBC Knowledge launched as a multimedia channel, with services available on the newly launched BBC Text Digital Teletext service, and on BBC Online. The channel had an educational aim, which was modified later on in its life to offer documentaries. Topic. 2000-2011 In 2002, several television and radio channels were reorganized. BBC Knowledge was replaced by BBC4 and became the BBC's Arts and Documentaries channel. CBBC, which had been a programming strand as Children's BBC since 1985, was split into CBBC and CBBS for younger children, with both new services getting a digital channel, the CBBC channel and CBBS channel. In addition to the television channels, new digital radio stations were created, One Extra, Six Music and BBC Seven. BBC One Extra was a sister station to Radio One and specialised in modern black music, BBC Six Music specialised in alternative music genres and BBC Seven specialised in archive, speech and children's programming. The following few years resulted in repositioning of some of the channels to conform to a larger brand. In 2003, BBC Choice was replaced by BBC Three, with programming for younger generations and shocking real life documentaries. BBC News 24 became the BBC News Channel in 2008, and BBC Radio 7 became BBC Radio 4 Extra in 2011, with new programmes to supplement those broadcast on Radio 4. In 2008, another channel was launched, BBC Alba, a Scottish Gaelic service. During this decade, the corporation began to sell off a number of its operational divisions to private owners. BBC Broadcast was spun off as a separate company in 2002, and in 2005. It was sold off to Australian-based Macquarie Capital Alliance Group and Macquarie Bank Limited and rebranded Red Bee Media. The BBC's IT, telephony and broadcast technology were brought together as BBC Technology Limited in 2001, and the division was later sold to the German company Siemens IT Solutions and Services, CIS. CIS was subsequently acquired from Siemens by the French company Atos. Further divestments included BBC Books, sold to Random House in 2006, BBC Outside Broadcasts Limited, sold in 2008, to Satellite Information Services, Costumes and Wigs, stock sold in 2008 to Angels the Costumeers, and BBC Magazines, sold to Immediate Media Company in 2011. After the sales of OBs and costumes, the remainder of BBC Resources was reorganised as BBC Studios and Post Production, which continues today as a wholly owned subsidiary of the BBC. The 2004 Hutton Inquiry and the subsequent report raised questions about the BBC's journalistic standards and its impartiality. 
This led to resignations of senior management members at the time including the then Director General, Greg Dyke. In January 2007, the BBC released minutes of the board meeting which led to Greg Dyke's resignation. Unlike the other departments of the BBC, the BBC World Service was funded by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office, more commonly known as the Foreign Office or the FCO, is the British government department responsible for promoting the interests of the United Kingdom abroad. In 2006, BBC HD launched as an experimental service, and became official in December 2007. The channel broadcast HD simulcasts of programs on BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three and BBC Four as well as repeats of some older programs in HD. In 2010, an HD simulcast of BBC One launched, BBC One HD. The channel uses HD versions of BBC One's schedule and uses upscaled versions of programs not currently produced in HD. The BBC HD channel closed in March 2013 and was replaced by BBC Two HD in the same month. On 18 October 2007, BBC Director General Mark Thompson announced a controversial plan to make major cuts and reduce the size of the BBC as an organisation. The plans included a reduction in posts of 2,500, including 1,800 redundancies, consolidating news operations, reducing programming output by 10% and selling off the flagship television centre building in London. These plans have been fiercely opposed by unions, who have threatened a series of strikes, however, the BBC have stated that the cuts are essential to move the organisation forward and concentrate on increasing the quality of programming. On 20 October 2010, the Chancellor of the Exchequer George Osborne announced that the television licence fee would be frozen at its current level until the end of the current charter in 2016. The same announcement revealed that the BBC would take on the full cost of running the BBC World Service and the BBC Monitoring Service from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and partially finance the Welsh broadcaster S4C. Topic 2011 to present. Further cuts were announced on the 6th of October 2011, so the BBC could reach a total reduction in their budget of 20%. Following the licence fee freeze in October 2010, which included cutting staff by 2,000 and sending a further 1,000 to the Media City UK development in Salford, with BBC Three moving online only in 2016, the sharing of more programmes between stations and channels, sharing of radio news bulletins, more repeats in schedules, including the whole of BBC Two daytime and for some original programming to be reduced. BBC HD was closed on 26 March 2013, and replaced with an HD simulcast of BBC Two, however, flagship programmes, other channels and full funding for CBBC and CBBS would be retained. Numerous BBC facilities have been sold off, including New Broadcasting House on Oxford Road in Manchester. Many major departments have been relocated to Broadcasting House and Media City UK, particularly since the closure of BBC Television Centre in March 2013. On 16 February 2016, the BBC Three television service was discontinued and replaced by a digital outlet under the same name, targeting its young adult audience with web series and other content. Under the new Royal Charter instituted 2017, the corporation must publish an annual report to Ofcom, outlining its plans and public service obligations for the next year. In its 2017-18 report, released July 2017, the BBC announced plans to reinvent its output to better compete against commercial streaming services such as Netflix. These plans included increasing the diversity of its content on television and radio, a major increase in investments towards digital children's content, and plans to make larger investments in other nations of the United Kingdom besides England to rise to the challenge of better reflecting and representing a changing UK. Topic: Governance and corporate structure. 
The BBC is a statutory corporation, independent from direct government intervention, with its activities being overseen from April 2017 by the BBC Board and regulated by Ofcom. The chairman is Sir David Clementi. Topic. Charter The BBC operates under a royal charter. The current charter came into effect on 1 January 2017 and runs until 31 December 2026. The 2017 charter abolished the BBC Trust and replaced it with external regulation by Ofcom, with governance by the BBC Board. Under the Royal Charter, the BBC must obtain a license from the Home Secretary. This license is accompanied by an agreement which sets the terms and conditions under which the BBC is allowed to broadcast. Topic. BBC Board The BBC Board was formed in April 2017. It replaced the previous governing body, the BBC Trust, which in itself had replaced the Board of Governors in 2007. The Board sets the strategy for the corporation, assesses the performance of the BBC Executive Board in delivering the BBC's services, and appoints the Director General. Regulation of the BBC is now the responsibility of Ofcom. The board consists of the following members. Topic. Executive Committee The Executive Committee is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the broadcaster. Consisting of senior managers of the BBC, the committee meets once per month and is responsible for operational management and delivery of services within a framework set by the board, and is chaired by the Director General, currently Tony Hall. The Director General is Chief Executive and, from 1994, Editor-in-Chief. Topic operational divisions The corporation has the following in-house divisions covering the BBC's output and operations. Content, headed by Charlotte Moore is in charge of the corporation's television channels including the commissioning of programming. Radio and Education headed by James Purnell is in charge of BBC radio and music content across the BBC under the BBC Music brand, including music programmes on BBC television, events such as the BBC Proms and the numerous orchestras such as the BBC Philharmonic, as well as the Children's Channel CBBC, News and Current Affairs headed by Fran Unsworth operates the BBC News operation, including the national, regional and international output on television, radio and online, as well as the output of the BBC Global News Division. It is also in charge of the corporation's current affairs programming and have some responsibility for sports output. The Deputy Director General Group headed by Anne Bulford, contains design and engineering, which is in charge of all digital output, such as BBC Online, BBC iPlayer, BBC Red Button Service and developing new technologies through BBC Research and Development. The division also includes other pan-BBC functions including finance, HR, strategy, security and property. Nations and Regions, headed by Ken Macquarie is responsible for the corporation's divisions in Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, the English regions. Topic commercial divisions The BBC also operates a number of wholly owned commercial divisions. BBC Studios, headed by Tim Davey, is the former in-house television production, entertainment, music and events, factual and scripted drama and comedy. Following a merger with BBC Worldwide in April 2018, it also operates international channels and sells programmes and merchandise in the UK and abroad to gain additional income that is returned to BBC programmes. It is kept separate from the corporation due to its commercial nature. BBC World News Department is in charge of the production and distribution of its commercial global television channel. It works closely with the BBC News Group, but is not governed by it, and shares the corporation's facilities and staff. It also works with BBC Studios, the channel's distributor. 
BBC Studio Works is also separate and officially owns and operates some of the BBC's studio facilities, such as the BBC Elstree Centre, leasing them out to productions from within and outside of the corporation. <laughs> MI5 vetting policy From as early as the 1930s until the 1990s, MI5, the British Domestic Intelligence Service, engaged in vetting of applicants for BBC positions, a policy designed to keep out persons deemed subversive. In 1933, BBC executive Colonel Alan Dornay began to meet with the head of MI5, Sir Vernon Kell, to informally trade information. From 1935, a formal arrangement was made wherein job applicants would be secretly vetted by MI5 for their political views without their knowledge. The BBC took up a policy of denying any suggestion of such a relationship by the press. The existence of MI5 itself was not officially acknowledged until the Security Service Act 1989. This relationship garnered wider public attention after an article by David Lee and Paul Lashmer appeared in The Observer in August 1985, revealing that MI5 had been betting appointments, running operations out of Room 105 in Broadcasting House. At the time of the expose, the operation was being ran by Ronnie Stoneham. A memo from 1984 revealed that blacklisted organisations included the far-left Communist Party of Great Britain, the Socialist Workers' Party, the Workers' Revolutionary Party and the Militant Tendency, as well as the far-right National Front and the British National Party. An association with one of these groups could result in a denial of a job application. In October 1985, the BBC announced that it would stop the vetting process, except for a few people in top roles, as well as those in charge of wartime broadcasting service emergency broadcasting in event of a nuclear war and staff in the BBC World Service. In 1990, following the Security Service Act 1989, vetting was further restricted to only those responsible for wartime broadcasting and those with access to secret government information. Michael Hodder, who succeeded Stoneham, had the MI5 vetting files sent to the BBC Information and Archives in Reading, Berkshire. Topic. Finances. The BBC has the second largest budget of any UK-based broadcaster with an operating expenditure of £4.722 billion in 2013-14 compared with £6.471 billion for British Sky Broadcasting in 2013-14 and £1.843 billion for ITV in the calendar year 2013. Topic. Revenue. The principal means of funding the BBC is through the television licence, costing £154.50 per year per household since April 2019. Such a licence is required to legally receive broadcast television across the UK, the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man. No licence is required to own a television used for other means, or for sound-only radio sets, though a separate licence for these was also required for non-TV households until 1971. The cost of a television licence is set by the government and enforced by the criminal law. A discount is available for households with only black and white television sets. A 50% discount is also offered to people who are registered blind or severely visually impaired, and the license is completely free for any household containing anyone aged 75 or over. As a result of the UK government's recent spending review, an agreement has been reached between the government and the corporation in which the current license fee will remain frozen at the current level until the Royal Charter is renewed at the beginning of 2017. The BBC pursues its license fee collection and enforcement under the trading name TV Licensing. The revenue is collected privately by Capita, an outside agency, and is paid into the Central Government Consolidated Fund, a process defined in the Communications Act 2003. Funds are then allocated by the Department of Culture, Media and Sport DCMS, and the Treasury and approved by Parliament via legislation. 
Additional revenues are paid by the Department for Work and Pensions to compensate for subsidized licenses for eligible over 75-year-olds. The license fee is classified as a tax, and its evasion is a criminal offense. Since 1991, collection and enforcement of the license fee has been the responsibility of the BBC in its role as TV licensing authority. Thus, the BBC is a major prosecuting authority in England and Wales and an investigating authority in the UK as a whole. The BBC carries out surveillance mostly using subcontractors on properties under the auspices of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000 and may conduct searches of a property using a search warrant. According to the BBC, more than 204,000 people in the UK were caught watching TV without a licence during the first six months of 2012. Licence fee evasion makes up around one-tenth of all cases prosecuted in magistrates' courts, income from commercial enterprises and from overseas sales of its catalogue of programmes has substantially increased over recent years, with BBC Worldwide contributing some £145 million to the BBC's core public service business. According to the BBC's 2013-14 annual report, its total income was £5 billion, £5.066 billion, which can be broken down as follows. £3.726 billion in license fees collected from householders. £1.023 billion from the BBC's commercial businesses. £244.6 million from government grants, of which £238.5 million is from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office for the BBC World Service, £72.1 million from other income, such as rental collections and royalties from overseas broadcasts of programming. The license fee has, however, attracted criticism. It has been argued that in an age of multi-stream, multi-channel availability, an obligation to pay a license fee is no longer appropriate. The BBC's use of private sector company Capita Group to send letters to premises not paying the license fee has been criticised, especially as there have been cases where such letters have been sent to premises which are up to date with their payments, or do not require a TV license. The BBC uses advertising campaigns to inform customers of the requirement to pay the license fee. Past campaigns have been criticised by Conservative MP Boris Johnson and former MP Anne Widdicombe for having a threatening nature and language used to scare evaders into paying. Audio clips and television broadcasts are used to inform listeners of the BBC's comprehensive database. There are a number of pressure groups campaigning on the issue of the license fee. The majority of the BBC's commercial output comes from its commercial arm BBC Worldwide who sell programs abroad and exploit key brands for merchandise. Of the 2012-13 sales, 27% were centered on the five key super brands of Doctor Who, Top Gear, Strictly Come Dancing, known as Dancing with the Stars internationally, the BBC's archive of natural history programming, collected under the umbrella of BBC Earth, and the, now sold, travel guide brand Lonely Planet. Topic. Expenditure The following expenditure figures are from 2012-13 and show the expenditure of each service they are obliged to provide. A significantly large portion of the BBC's income is spent on the corporation's television and radio services with each service having a different budget based upon their content. Topic: <laughs> Headquarters and regional offices. Broadcasting House in Portland Place, London, is the official headquarters of the BBC. It is home to six of the ten BBC national radio networks, BBC Radio 1, BBC Radio 1 Extra, BBC Asian Network, BBC Radio 3, BBC Radio 4, and BBC Radio 4 Extra. It is also the home of BBC News, which relocated to the building from BBC Television Centre in 2013. On the front of the building are statues of Prospero and Ariel, characters from William Shakespeare's play The Tempest, sculpted by Eric Gill. 
Renovation of Broadcasting House began in 2002, and was completed in 2013. Until it closed at the end of March 2013, BBC Television was based at BBC Television Centre, a purpose-built television facility and the second built in the country located in White City, London. This facility has been host to a number of famous guests and programmes through the years, and its name and image is familiar with many British citizens. Nearby, the BBC White City complex contains numerous programme offices, housed in Centre House, the Media Centre and Broadcast Centre. It is in this area around Shepherd's Bush that the majority of BBC employees work. As part of a major reorganisation of BBC property, the entire BBC News operation relocated from the News Centre at BBC Television Centre to the refurbished Broadcasting House to create what is being described as one of the world's largest live broadcast centres. The BBC News Channel and BBC World News relocated to the premises in early 2013. Broadcasting House is now also home to most of the BBC's national radio stations, and the BBC World Service. The major part of this plan involves the demolition of the two post-war extensions to the building and construction of an extension designed by Sir Richard McCormack of MJP Architects. This move will concentrate the BBC's London operations, allowing them to sell Television Centre, which is expected to be completed by 2016. In addition to the scheme above, the BBC is in the process of making and producing more programmes outside London, involving production centres such as Belfast, Cardiff, Glasgow, Newcastle and, most notably, in Greater Manchester as part of the BBC North Project. Scheme where several major departments, including BBC Northwest, BBC Manchester, BBC Sport, BBC Children's, CBBS, Radio 5 Live, BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra, BBC Breakfast, BBC Learning, and the BBC Philharmonic have all moved from their previous locations in either London or New Broadcasting House, Manchester, to the new 200-acre, 80 hectares, Media City UK production facilities in Salford that form part of the large BBC North Group division and will therefore become the biggest staffing operation outside London, as well as the two main sites in London, Broadcasting House and White City. There are seven other important BBC production centres in the UK, mainly specialising in different productions. Broadcasting House Cardiff, has been home to BBC Cymru Wales, which specialises in drama production. Open since October 2011, and containing seven new studios, Roth Lock is notable as the home of productions such as Doctor Who and Casualty. Broadcasting House Belfast, home to BBC Northern Ireland, specialises in original drama and comedy, and has taken part in many co-productions with independent companies and notably with RTE in the Republic of Ireland. BBC Scotland, based in Pacific Quay, Glasgow is a large producer of programmes for the network, including several quiz shows. In England, the larger regions also produce some programming. Previously, the largest hub of BBC programming from the regions is BBC Northwest. At present they produce all religious and ethical programmes on the BBC, as well as other programmes such as A Question of Sport. However, this is to be merged and expanded under the BBC North project, which involved the region moving from New Broadcasting House, Manchester, to Media City UK. BBC Midlands, based at the Mailbox in Birmingham, also produces drama and contains the headquarters for the English regions and the BBC's daytime output. Other production centres include Broadcasting House Bristol, home of BBC West and famously the BBC Natural History Unit and to a lesser extent, Quarry Hill in Leeds, home of BBC Yorkshire. There are also many smaller local and regional studios throughout the UK, operating the BBC regional television services and the BBC local radio stations. The BBC also operates several news gathering centres in various locations around the world, which provide news coverage of that region to the national and international news operations. Topic: Technology Atos Service. 
In 2004, the BBC contracted out its former BBC Technology Division to the German engineering and electronics company Siemens IT Solutions and Services CIS, outsourcing its IT, telephony and broadcast technology systems. When Atos Origin acquired the CIS division from Siemens in December 2010 for €850 million Euros, £720 million, the BBC support contract also passed to Atos, and in July 2011, the BBC announced to staff that its technology support would become an Atos service. Siemens staff working on the BBC contract were transferred to Atos and BBC Technology Systems including the BBC website are now managed by Atos. In 2011, the BBC's Chief Financial Officer Zaran Patel stated to the House of Commons Public Accounts Committee that, following criticism of the BBC's management of major IT projects with Siemens, such as the Digital Media Initiative, the BBC partnership with Atos would be instrumental in achieving cost savings of around £64 million as part of the BBC's Delivering Quality First program. In 2012, the BBC's Chief Technology Officer, John Linwood, expressed confidence in service improvements to the BBC's technology provision brought about by Atos. He also stated that supplier accountability had been strengthened following some high-profile technology failures which had taken place during the partnership with Siemens. Topic. Services Topic. Television The BBC operates several television channels in the UK. BBC One and BBC Two are the flagship television channels, others are BBC Four, BBC News, BBC Parliament, and two children's channels, CBBC and CBBS. Digital television is now entrenched in the UK, with analog transmission completely phased out as of December 2012. It also operates the internet television service BBC3, which ceased broadcasting as a linear television channel in February 2016. BBC One is a regionalised TV service which provides opt-outs throughout the day for local news and other local programming. These variations are more pronounced in the BBC Nations, i.e. Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales, where the presentation is mostly carried out locally on BBC One and Two, and where programme schedules can vary greatly from that of the network. BBC Two variations exist in the nations, however, English regions today rarely have the option to opt out as regional programming now only exists on BBC One. BBC Two was also the first channel to be transmitted on 625 lines in 1964, then carry a small-scale regular colour service from 1967. BBC One would follow in November 1969. A new Scottish Gaelic television channel, BBC Alba, was launched in September 2008. It is also the first multi-genre channel to come entirely from Scotland with almost all of its programmes made in Scotland. The service was initially only available via satellite but since June 2011 has been available to viewers in Scotland on Freeview and cable television. The BBC currently operates HD simulcasts of all its nationwide channels with the exception of BBC Parliament. Until the 26th of March 2013, a separate channel called BBC HD was available in place of BBC2 HD. It launched on 9 June 2006, following a 12-month trial of the broadcasts. It became a proper channel in 2007, and screened HD programs as simulcasts of the main network, or as repeats. The corporation has been producing programs in the format for many years, and stated that it hoped to produce 100% of new programs in HDTV by 2010. On 3 November 2010, a high-definition simulcast of BBC One was launched, entitled BBC One HD, and BBC Two HD launched on 26 March 2013, replacing BBC HD. In the Republic of Ireland, Belgium, the Netherlands and Switzerland, the BBC channels are available in a number of ways. 
In these countries digital and cable operators carry a range of BBC channels. These include BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Four and BBC World News, although viewers in the Republic of Ireland may receive BBC services via overspill from transmitters in Northern Ireland or Wales, or via deflectors. Transmitters in the Republic which rebroadcast broadcasts from the UK, received off-air, or from digital satellite. Since 1975, the BBC has also provided its TV programmes to the British Forces Broadcasting Service BFBS, allowing members of UK military serving abroad to watch them on four dedicated TV channels. From 27 March 2013, BFBS will carry versions of BBC One and BBC Two, which will include children's programming from CBBC, as well as carrying programming from BBC Three on a new channel called BFBS Extra. Since 2008, all the BBC channels are available to watch online through the BBC iPlayer service. This online streaming ability came about following experiments with live streaming, involving streaming certain channels in the UK. In February 2014, Director General Tony Hall announced that the corporation needed to save £100 million. In March 2014, the BBC confirmed plans for BBC Three to become an internet only channel. Topic. Genome Project In December 2012, the BBC completed a digitization exercise, scanning the listings of all BBC programmes from an entire run of about 4,500 copies of the Radio Times magazine from the first, 1923, issue to 2009, later listings already being held electronically, the BBC Genome Project with a view to creating an online database of its program output. An earlier 10 months of listings are to be obtained from other sources. They identified around 5 million programs, involving 8.5 million actors, presenters, writers and technical staff. The Genome Project was opened to public access on 15 October 2014, with corrections to OCR errors and changes to advertised schedules being crowdsourced. Topic. Radio The BBC has 10 radio stations serving the whole of the UK, a further six stations in the national regions, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, and 40 other local stations serving defined areas of England. Of the 10 national stations, five are major stations and are available on FM and or AM as well as on DAB and online. These are BBC Radio 1, offering new music and popular styles and being notable for its chart show, BBC Radio 2, playing adult contemporary, country and soul music amongst many other genres, BBC Radio 3, presenting classical and jazz music together with some spoken word programming of a cultural nature in the evenings, BBC Radio 4, focusing on current affairs, factual and other speech-based programming, including drama and comedy, and BBC Radio 5, Live, broadcasting 24-hour news, sport and talk programs. In addition to these five stations, the BBC also runs a further five stations that broadcast on DAB and online only. These stations supplement and expand on the big five stations, and were launched in 2002. BBC Radio 1 Extra Sisters Radio 1, and broadcasts new black music and urban tracks. BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra Sisters 5 live and offers extra sport analysis, including broadcasting sports that previously were not covered. BBC Radio 6 Music offers alternative music genres and is notable as a platform for new artists. BBC Radio 7, later renamed BBC Radio 4 Extra, provided archive drama, comedy and children's programming. Following the change to Radio 4 Extra, the service has dropped a defined children's strand in favor of family-friendly drama and comedy. In addition, new programs to complement Radio 4 programs were introduced such as Ambridge Extra, and Desert Island Discs Revisited. The final station is the BBC Asian Network, providing music, talk and news to this section of the community. 
This station evolved out of local radio stations serving certain areas, and as such this station is available on medium wave frequency in some areas of the Midlands. As well as the national stations, the BBC also provides 40 BBC local radio stations in England and the Channel Islands, each named for and covering a particular city and its surrounding area e.g. BBC Radio Bristol, county or region e.g. BBC Three Counties Radio, or geographical area e.g. BBC Radio Solent covering the central south coast. A further six stations broadcast in what the BBC terms the national regions Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. These are BBC Radio Wales in English, BBC Radio Cymru in Welsh, BBC Radio Scotland in English, BBC Radio Nan Gael in Scottish Gaelic, BBC Radio Ulster, and BBC Radio Foyle, the latter being an opt-out station from Radio Ulster for the northwest of Northern Ireland. The BBC's UK national channels are also broadcast in the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, although these crown dependencies are outside the UK, and in the former there are two local stations, BBC Guernsey and BBC Radio Jersey. There is no BBC local radio station, however, in the Isle of Man, partly because the island has long been served by the popular independent commercial station, Manx Radio, which predates the existence of BBC local radio. BBC services in the dependencies are financed from television licence fees which are set at the same level as those payable in the UK, although collected locally. This is the subject of some controversy in the Isle of Man since, as well as having no BBC local radio service, the island also lacks a local television news service analogous to that provided by BBC Channel Islands. For a worldwide audience, the BBC World Service provides news, current affairs and information in 28 languages, including English, around the world and is available in over 150 capital cities. It is broadcast worldwide on shortwave radio, DAB and online and has an estimated weekly audience of 192 million, and its websites have an audience of 38 million people per week. Since 2005, it is also available on DAB in the UK, a step not taken before, due to the way it is funded. The service is funded by a parliamentary grant in aid, administered by the Foreign Office, however, following the government's spending review in 2011, this funding will cease, and it will be funded for the first time through the license fee. In recent years, some services of the World Service have been reduced, the Thai service ended in 2006, as did the Eastern European languages, with resources diverted instead into the new BBC Arabic television. Historically, the BBC was the only legal radio broadcaster based in the UK mainland until 1967, when University Radio York, URI, then under the name Radio York, was launched as the first, and now oldest, legal independent radio station in the country. However, the BBC did not enjoy a complete monopoly before this as several continental stations, such as Radio Luxembourg, had broadcast programmes in English to Britain since the 1930s and the Isle of Man-based Manx Radio began in 1964. Today, despite the advent of commercial radio, BBC radio stations remain among the most listened to in the country, with Radio 2 having the largest audience share up to 16.8% in 2011-12, and Radios 1 and 4 ranked second and third in terms of weekly reach. BBC programming is also available to other services and in other countries. Since 1943, the BBC has provided radio programming to the British Forces Broadcasting Service, which broadcasts in countries where British troops are stationed. BBC Radio 1 is also carried in the United States and Canada on Sirius XM Radio, online streaming only. The BBC is a patron of the Radio Academy. Topic. News. BBC News is the largest broadcast news gathering operation in the world, providing services to BBC domestic radio as well as television networks such as the BBC News, BBC Parliament and BBC World News. In addition to this, news stories are available on the BBC Red Button service and BBC News Online. 
In addition to this, the BBC has been developing new ways to access BBC News, as a result has launched the service on BBC Mobile, making it accessible to mobile phones and PDAs, as well as developing alerts by email, digital television, and on computers through a desktop alert. Ratings figures suggest that during major incidents such as the 7th of July 2005 London bombings or royal events, the UK audience overwhelmingly turns to the BBC's coverage as opposed to its commercial rivals. On the 7th of July 2005, the day that there were a series of coordinated bomb blasts on London's public transport system, the BBC online website recorded an all-time bandwidth peak of 11 gigabits per second at 12.00 on the 7th of July. BBC News received some 1 billion total hits on the day of the event, including all images, text and HTML, serving some 5.5 terabytes of data. At peak times during the day there were 40,000 page requests per second for the BBC News website. The previous day's announcement of the 2012 Olympics being awarded to London caused a peak of around 5 gigabits per second. The previous all-time high at BBC Online was caused by the announcement of the Michael Jackson verdict, which used 7.2 gigabits per second. Internet The BBC's online presence includes a comprehensive news website and archive. The BBC's first official online service was the BBC Networking Club, which was launched on of May 1994. The service was subsequently relaunched as BBC Online in 1997, before being renamed BBCI, then BBC.co.uk, before it was rebranded back as BBC Online. The website is funded by the license fee, but uses GEOIP technology, allowing advertisements to be carried on the site when viewed outside of the UK. The BBC claims the site to be Europe's most popular content-based site and states that 13.2 million people in the UK visit the site's more than 2 million pages each day. In 2017, BBC Online was among the 10 most cited sources in the English Wikipedia. According to Alexa's Traffic Rank System, in September 2019 BBC Online was ranked 114 in the world, and 6 in the United Kingdom. The center of the website is the homepage, which features a modular layout. Users can choose which modules, and which information, is displayed on their homepage, allowing the user to customize it. This system was first launched in December 2007, becoming permanent in February 2008, and has undergone a few aesthetical changes since then. The homepage then has links to other micro-sites, such as BBC News Online, Sport, Weather, TV and Radio. As part of the site, every program on BBC television or radio is given its own page, with bigger programs getting their own microsite, and as a result it is often common for viewers and listeners to be told website addresses URLs, for the program website. Another large part of the site also allows users to watch and listen to most television and radio output live and for seven days after broadcast using the BBC iPlayer platform, which launched on 27 July 2007, and initially used peer-to-peer -peer and DRM technology to deliver both radio and TV content of the last seven days for offline use for up to 30 days, since then video is now streamed directly. Also, through participation in the Creative Archive License Group, bbc.co.uk allowed legal downloads of selected archive material via the Internet. The BBC has often included learning as part of its online service, running services such as BBC Jam, Learning Zone Class Clips and also runs services such as BBC Webwise and FirstClick which are designed to teach people how to use the Internet. BBC Jam was a free online service, delivered through broadband and narrowband connections, providing high-quality interactive resources designed to stimulate learning at home and at school. 
Initial content was made available in January 2006. However, BBC Jam was suspended on the 20th of March 2007 due to allegations made to the European Commission that it was damaging the interests of the commercial sector of the industry. In recent years, some major online companies and politicians have complained that BBC Online receives too much funding from the television license, meaning that other websites are unable to compete with the vast amount of advertising free online content available on BBC Online. Some have proposed that the amount of license fee money spent on BBC Online should be reduced, either being replaced with funding from advertisements or subscriptions, or a reduction in the amount of content available on the site. In response to this the BBC carried out an investigation, and has now set in motion a plan to change the way it provides its online services. BBC Online will now attempt to fill in gaps in the market, and will guide users to other websites for currently existing market provision. For example, instead of providing local events information and timetables, users will be guided to outside websites already providing that information. Part of this plan included the BBC closing some of its websites, and re-diverting money to redevelop other parts. On 26 February 2010, The Times claimed that Mark Thompson, Director General of the BBC, proposed that the BBC's web output should be cut by 50%, with online staff numbers and budgets reduced by 25% in a bid to scale back BBC operations and allow commercial rivals more room. On 2 March 2010, the BBC reported that it will cut its website spending by 25% and close BBC Six Music and Asian Network, as part of Mark Thompson's plans to make a smaller, fitter BBC for the digital age. Topic. Interactive television BBC Red Button is the brand name for the BBC's interactive digital television services, which are available through Freeview, Digital Terrestrial, as well as Freesat, Sky, Satellite, and Virgin Media, Cable. Unlike CFAX, the service's analog counterpart, BBC Red Button is able to display full-color graphics, photographs, and video, as well as programs and can be accessed from any BBC channel. The service carries news, weather and sport 24 hours a day, but also provides extra features related to programs specific at that time. Examples include viewers to play along at home to game shows, to give voice and vote on opinions to issues, as used alongside programs such as Question Time. At some points in the year, when multiple sporting events occur, some coverage of less mainstream sports or games are frequently placed on the red button for viewers to watch. Frequently, other features are added unrelated to programs being broadcast at that time, such as the broadcast of the Doctor Who animated episode Dreamland in November 2009. Topic. Music The BBC employs five staff orchestras, a professional choir, and supports two amateur choruses, based in BBC venues across the UK, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, the BBC Singers and BBC Symphony Chorus based in London, the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra in Glasgow, the BBC Philharmonic in Salford, the BBC Concert Orchestra based in Watford, and the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and BBC National Chorus of Wales in Cardiff. It also buys a selected number of broadcasts from the Ulster Orchestra in Belfast and the BBC Big Band. The BBC proms have been produced by the BBC every year since 1927, stepping in to fund the popular classical music festival when music publishers Chapel & Co. withdrew their support. In 1930, the newly formed BBC Symphony Orchestra gave all 49 proms, and have performed at every last night of the proms since then. Nowadays, the BBC's orchestras and choirs are the backbone of the proms, giving around 40% to 50% of all performances each season. Many famous musicians of every genre have played at the BBC, such as the Beatles. The Beatles Live at the BBC is one of their many albums. 
The BBC is also responsible for the broadcast of Glastonbury Festival, Reading Festival and United Kingdom coverage of the Eurovision Song Contest, a show with which the broadcaster has been associated for over 60 years. The BBC also operates the division of BBC Audiobooks sometimes found in association with Chivers Audiobooks. Topic. Other. The BBC operates other ventures in addition to their broadcasting arm. In addition to broadcasting output on television and radio, some programmes are also displayed on the BBC big screens located in several central city locations. The BBC and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office also jointly run BBC Monitoring, which monitors radio, television, the press and the Internet worldwide. The BBC also developed several computers throughout the 1980s, most notably the BBC Micro, which ran alongside the corporation's educational aims and programming. In 1951, in conjunction with Oxford University Press the BBC published the BBC Hymn Book which was intended to be used by radio listeners to follow hymns being broadcast. The book was published both with and without music, the music edition being entitled The BBC Hymn Book with Music. The book contained 542 popular hymns. Topic. See facts. The BBC provided the world's first teletext service called CFAX, near homonymous with C Facts. On 23 September 1974 until 23 October 2012 on the BBC One analogue channel then later on BBC Two. It showed informational pages such as news, sport and the weather. On New Year's Eve in 1974, competition from ITV's Oracle tried to compete with CFAX. Oracle closed on New Year's Eve, 1992. During its lifetime it attracted millions of viewers, right up to 2012, prior to the digital switchover in the United Kingdom. It ceased transmission at 23 hours 32 minutes and 19 seconds British summer time on 23 October 2012 after 38 years. Since then, the BBC's Red Button service has provided a digital-like information system that replaced CFAX. Topic. Britbox In 2016, the BBC, in partnership with fellow UK broadcasters ITV and Channel 4, who later withdrew from the project, set up Project Kangaroo, to develop an international online streaming service to rival services such as Netflix and Hulu. During the development stages Britflix, was touted as a potential name. However, the service eventually launched as BritBox in March 2017. The online platform shows a catalogue of classic BBC and ITV shows, as well as making a number of programmes available shortly after their UK broadcast. As of 2017, BritBox is available in the United States with the potential availability for new markets in the future. Topic. Commercial activities BBC Studios, formerly BBC Worldwide, is the wholly owned commercial subsidiary of the BBC, responsible for the commercial exploitation of BBC programmes and other properties, including a number of television stations throughout the world. It was formed following the restructuring of its predecessor, BBC Enterprises, in 1995. The company owns and administers a number of commercial stations around the world operating in a number of territories and on a number of different platforms. The channel BBC Entertainment shows current and archive entertainment programming to viewers in Europe, Africa, Asia and the Middle East, with the BBC Studios channels BBC America and BBC Canada, joint venture with Chorus Entertainment, showing similar programming in the North America region and BBC UK TV in the Australasia region. The company also airs two channels aimed at children, an international CBeebies channel and BBC Kids, a joint venture with Knowledge Network Corporation, which airs programs under the CBeebies and BBC K brands. 
The company also runs the channels BBC Knowledge, broadcasting factual and learning programmes, and BBC Lifestyle, broadcasting programmes based on themes of food, style and well-being. In addition to this, BBC Studios runs an international version of the channel BBC HD, and provides HD simulcasts of the channels BBC Knowledge and BBC America. BBC Studios also distributes the 24-hour international news channel BBC World News. The station is separate from BBC Studios to maintain the station's neutral point of view, but is distributed by BBC Studios. The channel itself is the oldest surviving entity of its kind, and has 50 foreign news bureaus and correspondents in nearly all countries in the world. As officially surveyed it is available to more than 294 million households, significantly more than CNN's estimated 200 million. In addition to these international channels, BBC Studios also owns the UK TV network of seven channels. These channels contain BBC archive programming to be rebroadcast on their respective channels, Alibi, Crime Dramas, Dave, Slogan, The Home of Witty Banter, Drama, Drama, launched in 2013, Eden, Nature, Gold, Comedy, W, Entertainment, and Yesterday, History Programming. In addition to these channels, many BBC programmes are sold via BBC Studios to foreign television stations with comedy, documentaries and historical drama productions being the most popular. In addition, BBC Television News appears nightly on many public broadcasting service stations in the United States, as do reruns of BBC programmes such as EastEnders, and in New Zealand on TVNZ1. In addition to programming, BBC Studios produces material to accompany programmes. The company maintained the publishing arm of the BBC, BBC Magazines, which published the Radio Times as well as a number of magazines that support BBC programming such as BBC Top Gear, BBC Good Food, BBC Sky at Night, BBC History, BBC Wildlife and BBC Music. BBC Magazines was sold to Exponent Private Equity in 2011, which merged it with Origin Publishing, previously owned by BBC Worldwide between 2004 and 2000. 2006 to form a media media company. BBC Studios also publishes books to accompany programs such as Doctor Who under the BBC Books brand, a publishing imprint majority owned by Random House. Soundtrack albums, talking books and sections of radio broadcasts are also sold under the brand BBC Records, with DVDs also being sold and licensed in large quantities to consumers both in the UK and abroad under the 2 Entertain brand. Archive programming and classical music recordings are sold under the brand BBC Legends. Topic. Cultural significance Until the development, popularization, and domination of television, radio was the broadcast medium upon which people in the United Kingdom relied. It reached into every home in the land, and simultaneously united the nation, an important factor during the Second World War. The BBC introduced the world's first high definition. 405 line television service in 1936. It suspended its television service during the Second World War and until 1946, but remained the only television broadcaster in the UK until 1955, when independent television ITV began operating. This heralded the transformation of television into a popular and dominant medium. Nevertheless, Throughout the 1950s radio still remained the dominant source of broadcast comedy. Further, the BBC was the only legal radio broadcaster until 1968, when Yuri obtained the first license. Despite the advent of commercial television and radio, with competition from ITV, Channel 4 and Sky, the BBC has remained one of the main elements in British popular culture through its obligation to produce TV and radio programmes for mass audiences. However, the arrival of BBC Two allowed the BBC also to make programmes for minority interests in drama, documentaries, current affairs, entertainment, and sport. 
Examples cited include the television series Civilization, Doctor Who, I, Claudius, Monty Python's Flying Circus, Pop Black, and Tonight, but other examples can be given in each of these fields as shown by the BBC's entries in the British Film Institute's 2000 list of the 100 greatest British television programmes, with the BBC's acclaimed 1970s sitcom Forty Towers, featuring John Cleese as Basil Forty, topping the list. Top of the Pops, the world's longest-running weekly music show, first aired in January 1964, with the Rolling Stones the first to perform on it. Some BBC shows have had a direct impact on society. For example, The Great British Bake Off is credited with reinvigorating interest in baking throughout the UK, with stores reporting sharp rises in sales of baking ingredients and accessories. The export of BBC programmes both through services like the BBC World Service and BBC World News, as well as through the channels operated by BBC Worldwide, means that audiences can consume BBC productions worldwide. The term, BBC English, was used as an alternative name for received pronunciation, and the English Pronouncing Dictionary uses the term, BBC Pronunciation, to label its recommendations. However, the BBC itself now makes more use of regional accents in order to reflect the diversity of the UK, while continuing to expect clarity and fluency of its presenters. From its starchy beginnings, the BBC has also become more inclusive, and now attempts to accommodate the interests of all strata of society and all minorities, because they all pay the licence fee. Topic. Colloquial terms Older domestic UK audiences often refer to the BBC as the Beeb, a nickname originally coined by Peter Sellers on The Goon Show in the 1950s, when he referred to the Beeb Beeb CEEB. -E it was then borrowed, shortened and popularised by radio DJ Kenny Everett. David Bowie's recording sessions at the BBC was released as Bowie at the Beeb, while Queen's recording sessions with the BBC was released as at the Beeb. Another nickname, now less commonly used, is Auntie, said to originate from the old-fashioned Auntie Knows Best attitude, or the idea of aunties and uncles who are present in the background of one's life but possibly a reference to the aunties and uncles who presented children's programs in the early days in the days when John Reith, the BBC's first director general, was in charge. The term auntie for the BBC is often credited to radio disc jockey Jack Jackson. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of the BBC the song Auntie was released in 1972. The two nicknames have also been used together as Auntie Beeb. Topic: Controversy and criticism. The BBC has faced various accusations regarding many topics: the Iraq War, politics, ethics and religion, as well as funding and staffing. It also has been involved in numerous controversies because of its coverage of specific news stories and programming. In October 2014, the BBC Trust issued the BBC Complaints Framework, outlining complaints and appeals procedures. However, the regulatory oversight of the BBC may be transferred to Ofcom. The British House of Commons Select Committee on Culture, Media and Sport recommended in its report, the future of the BBC, that Ofcom should become the final arbiter of complaints made about the BBC. The BBC has long faced accusations from conservatives of liberal and left-wing bias. Accusations of a bias against the premiership of Margaret Thatcher and the Conservative Party were often made against the BBC by members of that government, with Margaret Thatcher herself considering the broadcaster's news coverage to be biased and irresponsible. In 2011, Peter Sissons, a main news presenter at the BBC from 1989, 2009, said that, at the core of the BBC, in its very DNA, is a way of thinking that is firmly of the left. Another BBC presenter, Andrew Marr, commented that, 
The BBC is not impartial or neutral. It has a liberal bias, not so much a party political bias. It is better expressed as a cultural liberal bias. Former BBC director Roger Mosey classified it as liberal defensive. Conversely, writing for The Guardian, the left wing columnist Owen Jones stated, The truth is the BBC is stacked full of right wingers. And he cited as an example of bias its employment of ultra Thatcherite Andrew Neal as a politics presenter. Paul Mason, the former economics editor of the BBC's Newsnight programme, criticised the BBC as «unionist» in relation to its coverage of the Scottish independence referendum campaign and said its senior employees tended to be of a «neoliberal» point of view. The BBC has also been characterised as a pro-monarchist institution. The BBC was accused of propaganda by conservative journalist and author Toby Young due to what he believed to be an anti-Brexit approach, which included a day of live programming on migration. A 2018 opinion poll by BMG Research found that 40% of the British public think that the BBC is politically partisan, with a nearly even split between those that believe it leans to the left or right. In 2008, the BBC was criticized by some for referring to the men who carried out the November 2000 and eight Mumbai attacks as gunmen rather than terrorists in protest against the use of the word gunmen by the BBC journalist Mabasha Jord MJ Akbar refused to take part in an interview following the Mumbai terror attacks and criticized the BBC's reportage of the incident British parliamentarian Stephen Pound has supported these claims, referring to the BBC's whitewashing of the terror attacks as the worst sort of mealy-mouthed posturing. It is desperation to avoid causing offence which ultimately causes more offence to everyone. A BBC World Service newsreader who presented a daily show produced for Kyrgyzstan was claimed to have participated in an opposition movement with the goal of overthrowing the government led by President Kermanbek Bakiyev. The BBC presenter resigned from his post in 2010 once the allegations of his participation in the revolution became public. Logos and symbols of the BBC See also List of companies based in London List of television programmes broadcast by the BBC Stations of the BBC The Green Book British Television Early television stations Gaelic Broadcasting in Scotland Public Service Broadcasting in the United Kingdom Quango, an abbreviation for Quasi-Autonomous Non-Governmental Organisation British Midlands <laughs>